Hello everyone, this is me. I'm back with another reading from your suggestions. I was asking recently, what kind of reading would you like to have? Um, and a couple of answers came in. And now, hmm, I'm doing it. Okay, so this is a reading um, for the single ladies, the single men out there, all oh, the single ladies, all oh, the single ladies, um, about, okay, you know what, I'm single, I don't have anyone in mind, I don't have anyone, no crush, no person, no they, you know, what do they feel, I don't have anyone, so what's coming in for me next, it's a timeless reading, if you want to, because a lot of you guys, I figured out, are already thinking about next year. So if you want this to be about next year, this is your reading. This is it, okay? About next year and what's coming in, what to expect. Um, but I want this to be open, as open as possible. So whenever you find this reading, or let's better say, whenever this reading finds you, it will hold an answer, okay? So, let's go. No piles to choose from, three piles to choose from, okay? No symbols, no crystal stones, nothing. Just go with your gut feeling. I know some of you out there, they hate it if I do it like this, but this is my style, okay? I'm sorry, but this is just how I'm doing it. Um, so, I hope you can somehow arrange yourself um, with this, yeah, with this setup, uh, go with your gut feeling, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and then ask yourself, ask your spirit team, ask your higher self, what pile should I choose? Number one, or is it number two, or maybe number three, okay? If you need a little bit more time, feel free to press the pause button. We are not in a hurry at all here, not at all, so you have all the time in the world. Let's go. Pile number one. If you felt drawn to pile number one, what's coming? What shall we know about your love department next year? year or the next couple of weeks and months, it depends. So you decide the timeline and I tell you what I see, okay? So first of all, what I'm doing is I'm using Chuck Spezzano's Love Pack, which was sold out in Germany for quite a while. I'm so happy that I got the deck um, and I want to go here with the book. So pile number one, what's your first message? A dream come true. Wow. Who? Oh my goodness. <laughs> A dream come true. Okay, jackpot. <laughs> A dream come true means that something you really want is here for us now. This is a happy dream of love and success that makes us want to dance in the streets and in the sheets. If only we could choose to have pleasant dreams, we would celebrate heaven on earth. This card is one of great good fortune. Wow. The card signifies that the outcome is favorable. Something you dearly wanted is going to happen. Oh my God, I mean, this is awesome. This is beautiful. All that you've worked or wished for is about to arrive. You are victorious and about to be advanced. You have attained your heart's desire. This is a good this is as good as it gets. So now is time to enjoy your triumph. As happens sometimes in life and often in fairy tales, your dream is coming true. Your ship has come in. Now is a time for revelry and merrymaking. So I don't know what revelry is, revelry, but anyways. Um, yeah, I mean, phew, this is going to be a quick one <laughs> because I mean, this card that was like, bam, right in, okay? Like, okay, let's not beat around the bush here. Let's just go there straight away, like, bam. So pile number one, 
This is your message. You will get what you want, okay? If and I don't want to speak about the past here. I often do that, like I'm, I'm saying that, hey, I feel you, I know that you are coming from a bad situation and you may have experienced this or that and you may are coming from a place or a person, a situation where this and that happened to you. But you know what? I don't want to talk about the past here because it doesn't matter where you're coming from. What matters is that something beautiful is waiting for you at the horizon. It's your time now. It's as they say, your ship is coming in now. Your dream is coming true. Now is a time for merrymaking. And I love that because I really, I truly feel that you guys, you really, really deserve this. Um, yeah. And now look at that. I mean, you can't make this up. You can't. You saw me doing this like, you know, I put it completely up to spirit, which card came out, I was shuffling life in front of the camera and I was just like randomly, you know, opened, I just opened one page here in this book and these two messages, they fit together like a hand and a glove. Healing. Healing is going to take place for you and I am so happy that this is a reading especially for those who are singled. I'm not, I mean, maybe you're not. Maybe you have this thing going on with someone like, oh, very much drama in it and, you know, like crazy love and in and out and up and down and yes and no, like these kind of relationships. Maybe some of you, you were kind of ignoring the headline of the message and you were like, okay, I want a love message, so I take this reading anyways. But... At the bottom line, this reading was meant to be for those who are single and who don't have someone in mind. Someone like me, for example. Because I tell you a secret, I'm single right now and I don't have anyone in mind right now. I'm open to a certain point, I would say, but I am at a point in my life even like, you know, like with my age and everything, I'm 46 now, I don't want just anyone, you know, like just someone. I want the one. I want someone special. I want someone who lifts me up. I want someone who appreciates me. And I think you do find yourself in these words, don't you? Because this is you. You don't want just anyone just to not be alone, you know, or like to satisfy your family because they are like putting some pressure on you. Hey, you know what? You're 30 and you don't have kids. It's time. What are you waiting for? And what about Bob? And you know what? My friend Simone, she has such a beautiful, handsome son. What would you say if I kind of, you know, like bring you guys together? No, you don't want that. You want someone, and it's not just about who you want, it's also how it's going to happen, I feel. Like, it will happen naturally, it will unfold organically. You don't have to force it, you don't have to chase it, you know? Like, it's all about a natural thing to happen. Because you are coming from a place of love, and this person too. It's not about feeling needy and trying to cover up something with this relationship and trying, you know, like hoping that someone else is going to make you happy. I One of my absolute favorite quotes, and I think this is kind of the end of this pile, maybe other information, you know, like will come up later in another reading for you guys but for the moment i feel like what you need to know is that hey your dream will come true okay but um let me just say this one of my very favorite quotes is from osho and he said like hey you know what the problem is if you think someone else will make you happy you know like you need someone else to make you happy right and then like the quintus the the opposite is also true because if someone else can make you happy someone else can also make you unhappy right 
But let me ask you something. What is your duty in your life then? I mean, if someone else is making you happy and unhappy, what's your duty? I mean, what are you good for in your own life? What's your purpose? You are supposed to be the one who makes you happy. And if you are unhappy, it's also, you know, like the solution is, is to be found within yourself. You can always blame someone else, like my ex, my boss, my family, my childhood. This is because of my chronic disease that I have. I would love to do this or that, but you know, like due to this and that, I can't. Uh-uh. Mm -uh. uh No. No. And I feel like I'm talking to people who finally have understood this. Healing, to me, the healing card is like growing up and understanding finally that you have a purpose, you manifest all the time, you know your blind spots and your triggers and you found, finally, you have found a way to deal with them. And now you are coming from a place of love and not from a place for love. And that's the thing. Have your own touch that. Pile number two. Pile number two. What shall we know? For all the singles who don't have someone in mind. Okay, so be fair, guys. Please be fair. This is really just for those who are single, who are completely free, and who do not have someone else in mind, like from the past, or someone they call their twin flame or counterpart, you are completely free. Like, this is like a blank page, okay? And you want to know what's happening for me, what to expect in the future, or maybe since I'm uploading at the end of the year, maybe this is a sneak preview to the next year. It depends on when you find this reading, okay? It's timeless. Okay, let's go. What shall we know? The problem here is we have a fear of inadequacy, okay? That is your problem. Or at least this is something that plays a role when we talk about love and your personal love situation. Um, the fear to not be good enough, you know what I'm saying? The fear to, yeah, just not to be good enough and... Maybe also not to fit into the system. Maybe you would say that you are too fat or maybe too skinny. Maybe it's your age. Maybe you feel like you are too too old anyways. Like, Or maybe you are just 16 and you are already waiting for the one. You have all your life in front of you, but you feel like you want this person to come in right now. Okay? And others, they would probably say, hey, you are way too young let's give it a while like you can wait 10 years until you find them but you want it now i don't know it can be either way it can be everything right this is so personal but what i see here um is that your fear is so strong that it stops you from moving forward into relationships into true relationships i feel like some of you have maybe the tendency to fall in love with people who are not reachable who are not available in whatsoever way mm, i feel like you believe that you are not good enough and as a result you are maybe not able to handle what comes next mm, the interpretation of this card, I, I want to read this from the book, okay? Your fear of not being good enough is preventing you from opening up to a partner. It may be stopping you from going forward or may even make you want to run away rather than risk rejection. Fear means that you are misperceiving yourself, your partner and the situation. Don't do anything rash or use some small things to engineer a breakup. Because in truth, this is just for your fear of inadequacy. If you get this card, commit to healing, 
this mistaking feeling inside yourself. Ask for help, especially from your higher consciousness. This is the time to resolve your fear rather than sabotage your relationship or the possibility of one. If your partner receives this card, it is important to communicate how you feel about them. This is a time when reassurance is most helpful and timely. So I feel like spirit wants you to, to dive deep and to really ask yourself, okay, I am single, I don't have anyone in mind, which is good, right, in the first place, but where is it so? Where is it so hard for me to fall in love? I mean, very often especially here on YouTube, you know, like with these open general pick a card readings, 95% we are talking about a woman in love with a man, right? A woman in love with a man, but the man is not feeling it back or there is something else going on that's causing an issue, a problem, right? This is what we are dealing with here, like to more than 90%, I would say. Right or right? Would you agree here? I guess you would, right? Um, yes, yeah, sometimes we ask about health or family affairs. Sometimes we ask about job. But most of the time it's all about love and it's all about how do they feel? What do they want? Are they still thinking about me? Will we reconcile, you know? But sometimes... You don't even have someone that you could reconcile with. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes, I mean, it's one thing to be in love with someone, probably secretly or unhappily. But, you know, it's another point if you don't have someone you are in love with. There simply is no one you could fall in love with. I don't know. Maybe you are, maybe it's a little bit different than described in this book because maybe you feel others are not good enough for you. Maybe you have something to complain with every person that appears like, okay, the nose is too long, the hair is too short, or maybe I don't like his job, I don't like his family, they talk in a weird way, they are not spiritual enough, I don't know, you know. So it could be either ways, but Something to do with not being good enough that you should deal with and that you should dive into a little bit more in order to find out why is it that I'm single, maybe even single for years already, okay? This requires a lot of honesty. This requires a lot of honesty, okay? You have to be, as I like to say, brutally honest with yourself once okay that is the good news the good news is you just have to be honest once because once you are able to say it out loud and hey you know what it's another good news you don't even have to talk about that with other people it's enough if you are honest with yourself and you say to yourself okay i find out or i i, I do understand now that i am part of the problem It's either my fear of not being good enough or it's my criticism. Maybe I'm a perfectionist and it's just too much. It's just too much. Nobody out there can fit my standard. And this way I'm sabotaging myself. Say it out loud once. It takes you one minute. But it's a whole new, you know, like it, it changes everything. So are you brave enough for just one minute? Or maybe you're not. I mean, then you, probably another year will pass with you being single and people not feeling good enough for you or you not feeling good enough for others. It's a choice, right? Yeah, and here we go. This is why we see the entrapment card. Did you fall or do you fall into the same trap again and again and again? Do you repetitively fall in love with the wrong people? Do you hold yourself back? Are you sabotaging yourself? I think so, because otherwise, and I said it in pile number one, you can't make this up. I mean, you see me, I'm here, I'm using the whole deck, I'm shuffling life in front of the camera, right? 
I don't cut my readings in whatsoever way, so I do never manipulate a reading in any way. So I say it the way I see it, and sometimes the truth is not so easy to swallow. I, I This is usually when I get negative feedback. This is people who are not honest and who are not willing to see the truth as it is. But you know what? I don't mind. I mean, my job is not... How can I say that? This is an opportunity. This reading... This pile is an opportunity. You are now getting an opportunity to think about yourself and your patterns and your past and your ways, like your habits, your, your blockages, your beliefs. And you either take this opportunity or not. And you know what? This is up to you. It's not my thing. It's yours. Are you willing to work on yourself or do you prefer to stay in the trap? Is there anything else Spirit wants you to know? Any other message? You have the chance now to step up and to improve your love life, your health, you know, like, and your love life, because this is a love reading. We're not so much talking about health, although I want to mention that it kind of belongs together, right? Like being in love can improve your health immense. Like one, you know, like this feeling if you, when you are in love, like with the butterflies and you feel like you have energy um, for three people at least um, and so on and so far. So love life energy level, health, attitude, it all belongs together. So I feel like this is a big fat chance and it's up to you whether you want to take it or not, okay? Okay, let's go. Pile number three, last but not least. Pile number three, what shall we know for you? The singles out there, just the singles. So be fair, if you are not a single, then this is not your reading today. I will upload other readings and I have uploaded so many, 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 many readings before. I'm sure there's one for you. Um, if you are asking about reconciliation and what they think, what they feel, this is not your reading. This reading is a request of my subscribers and some of them wanted a reading, especially for the single people who do not have a certain person in mind. Okay, so let's be fair. Let's give everybody um, a true chance to get their message. And this is now pile number three. Okay, two cards, wow. Pile number three. The card from the Love Pack by Chuck Spezzano is revenge. And this is the interpretation of the card. Drawing this card means that you are being asked for your own sake and the sake of those around you to make a new choice. Let revenge go and learn a whole new way of love and relationships. Otherwise, your loneliness and failure will increase. Your intention to change allows your mind to give you new ideas and solutions, which can free you and bring love and success. Revenge comes from heartbreak and only leads to more heartbreak, which themselves are a form of revenge. You could have intimacy, tenderness and partnership. You could, but do you really want to get back at someone even at your own expense or to enjoy true love and happiness? So I feel like Maybe you have someone in mind. Maybe there is this one person that secretly you still are thinking about them and you still hope that somehow it's going to happen between you and them. But there must have been something like a, a bigger issue between you guys which caused the heartbreak and the pain and the breakup. And now probably... How can I say that? I mean, it sounds to me that either 
you blocked yourself completely right now from love out of fear because you are too afraid that someone else is hurting you again like this and then you're like okay before someone else is hurting me again like this uh, -uh I, I'm not going to fall in love at all in the first place okay this is the safe the safe a safe way to play the game right <laughs> not playing it <laughs> so um, but spirit wants you to play the game go in there you know like go out play the game but play it in a different way play it in a smarter way love is there for you tenderness intimacy but not the way you used to do it before so yeah and this is it you know like you see this is the victim consciousness card popping up it's just one of two cards the other card is very interesting too but let's talk about this one first because i feel it fits pretty good with this one like revenge and feeling as if you are the victim you know and someone hurt you so bad and all the men out there are crazy anyways and not good enough and assholes and whatnot so stop thinking like that because if you think like that um this is not the right way how to play the game you know um i mean it's a choice right of course and i must say i am a big fan of being single for a while and when I say a while, I really mean it. I'm not just talking about days or weeks. Um, you, is it, if it's up to me, you could be single like for three years in a row. And I feel like I would still celebrate you. And I would say, yes, go girl. This is the right choice. This is a good way to live your life. Just focusing on yourself. Um, get your shit together. Like make a good career. Make money. Celebrate. Go on holidays with your friends and stuff. Um, I would really, really encourage you to live a life according to this, mm, yeah, according to this, but what I see is some people live their life according to this attitude and they are single and they really celebrate life and they make career and good money and stuff, but deep down within themselves, there is this desire for intimacy and a love relationship, which is totally okay. The question is only, are you suppressing something? Are you trying to distract yourself? Or are you really, truly enjoying yourself and your me time? Okay, there's a difference. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. Um, I think everyone has to figure it out by themselves. And then we also have a lot of people out there, a lot of people who don't want to be alone at all. I would even say you can't be alone. Like being alone to you is, ugh, it's, no, this is not going to happen. It's, it's, you don't even want to think about it. Some people, I, the, the, I don't know. I, I see it also with my colleagues. You know, I'm a flight attendant. If you don't know, you know now. And let's just say we go to Rio or Japan, like Tokyo or Shanghai or Delhi. <laughs> the thing is, some people, they stay in the hotel for the whole time. And they do room service and probably they have some good books or they study on their room. Like, you know, like pr some people they do are flight attendants, but at the same time they are um, studying some other stuff at university. And this is a good time for them to do their homework. Or maybe they use the gym at the hotel. They do sport and whatnot. Or they get together and they just have a drink in the, in the coffee or at the bar. Others... And this is how I am. They go out. They go out and they discover the city. Um, I had the most, the best time like discovering Delhi, for example. This is just an example, okay? I've been to many, many different places. Um, but I, while I'm talking about this, I have this image of myself when I was driving with a tuk-tuk through Delhi and discovered markets and I don't know like 
went to buy some fruit or you know like discovered some cultural stuff and I like to do it all by myself but I am really I sometimes I feel I'm the only one who's doing it like that because mostly the people they want to do it together and then they are asking in the hotel lobby when we check in as a crew they say okay and who's doing something tomorrow can I join is someone going to this or that market? Can I join? Shall we do it together? Can we do this or that together? Do you want to do this with me together? I don't want to do anything together. I want to do it all by myself. But this is just me. I'm not saying that this is the only way to happiness. Not. Don't get me wrong here. I'm just trying to explain to you that we humans, we are different. Everyone is different. You know, like some people, they prefer being together. Others, they prefer doing their own thing, you know, and you can mix it up. Sometimes you like to do things all by yourself and then other days you want to gather, you want to have a party, you want to have a coffee or a drink. You are looking forward to some inspiration and hey, I mean, where are you getting the inspiration from? From others. Like either way, you are getting the inspiration, you are getting it from your counterpart, you need others in order, yeah, to live and to blossom. So I don't want to judge here whether it's good or not good to be alone or to be not alone. It's just, it depends on how makes it, how are you feeling about it? Because it's not helping you if you try to be alone, but you feel like shit while you are alone. I would rather... <laughs> Um, say then hey you know like if you can't be alone at all then don't be alone okay but at least try to be with people who make you feel good because if there's one thing that I do not want to see any longer in this world is people living a shitty life because they are surrounded by people who treat them like shit this is something that I do not want to see in this lifetime anymore, especially for the women. Don't be with someone who beats you up either emotionally or physically, right? Don't be with someone who is using you just or who is not seeing your value, who's not respecting you. Please don't be with someone like that. Allow to find a completely new attitude and approach. This is the wild card. Okay, you look at her. She's wearing a red dress. She looks sexy. Um, and she has a lamp. She's searching something. So I feel like everything that I just said, like within the last five or ten minutes throughout this, this, this pile, pile number three, is your invitation and permission to find out what suits you. What do you need to be happy? Do you need company or do you need more me time all by yourself? Do you want to gather with people or do you prefer to travel alone? At least for a while maybe, I don't know. So this is a wild card, okay? Spirit is not so much giving us some information about people coming into your life, but Spirit is telling you that You are being asked, you are being called out here to discover yourself and your needs a little bit more. In order, like, the question was, what is happening love-wise, you know? Like, what can I expect in terms of my love life? And the answer is, before something in your love life is happening, you have to figure yourself out. And then we will bring people in. And then we will bring you, you know, like the one you were looking for, searching for, waiting for. But first you have to figure out what you want and you have to get out of the victim consciousness. That is very, very, very important. You have to understand what's your role, what's your part in this drama, in this play. You have to understand the rules, how to play this game in a good way and how to play it in a toxic way. And then choose, do you want to have a toxic relationship or do you want to have a healthy one? It's easy as that, 
right? And once again, I said it in pile number two, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. This is how you allow the change to come in. I hope you like this reading. It was very, very intense. Um, and I want to thank you for being so brave and courageous to listen to such messages because I know sometimes it's not so easy to understand and to accept. But this is what wanted to come up today. Thank you for your suggestions. They are still coming in and I really appreciate that. Peace out and namaste.